I've wanted to animate a boat in Minecraft for years, and after lots of experimentation, I finally figured it out. Welcome back to my Minecraft world, Dreyunterra, over near the village of Tethysvale, where I've been working on a river, bridge, and some other details. But before we get to the boat, I want to go ahead and build up our fisherman's house here, as well as maybe a little bit of landscaping around this area just to make it really pretty, and then we can get to some more fun details. I started off framing it with dark oak logs, as I knew I wanted the house to look old and kind of worn. I added features like the hanging offshoot and porch, etc., before beginning to fill in the rest of the house with the walls and working out my deep slate roofline. Finally, I added where I wanted my windows, and it was basically ready for detailing. And with a lot more detail thrown in, we have something that I think looks pretty good. I did end up switching out the roof for the stone so we could get the mossy stone in there. And I think a nice touch here is using the darker deep slate tiles underneath the edges of the roof from a distance really kind of brings out that shaded underside, even if you were to be playing without shaders, which I do have shaders on for this, obviously. But as I was looking at it, it felt a little lonely sitting out here by itself. So I think we need a giant tree right here that is just slightly hanging over top of this fisherman's hut. This is a fun detail. You can see where the rainwater has kind of come through and the lichen has grown on it. But he just went ahead and threw in a cauldron to collect the water from the rain that's kind of coming off of the roof, which I thought was kind of a fun detail. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and make a quick tree and then we'll get on with the rest of the build. Trees are something that I really enjoy building in Minecraft. Working out all the branches and how they spread out from the base every direction, adding fences for small branches and gates for even smaller branches, and then covering the whole thing in leaves. I like to also texture the ground with coarse dirt, rooted dirt, and maybe a little gravel where the tree's roots have drawn out all the nutrients so grass can't even grow there. That's looking so much better, so much warmer and cozier and a little overgrown just the way that I want it. Now, I have to level with you all. My recording programs almost never break, but in this case, I actually lost all the audio of me building the boat, which is really unfortunate because I like to show you the process. But as it stands, I'll walk you through each step of what I did, starting with say hi to Balin, our Mr. Fisherman. It seems like a nice day for fishing, ain't it? <laughs> all right, so he's sitting in our boat which is connected up to a flying machine. This is really not that complicated. People have been building flying machines for ages. And I'll walk you through how to build this one specifically right now. All right, so starting off, you're gonna wanna have a starting point and an end point in the water for where you want your boat to actually go. And as a flying machine, it's only gonna go one direction back and forth. So whatever direction it is that you want it to go, you're gonna actually come down by one and then you're going to build a spruce staircase, or in this case, because my boat's spruce, I'm picking spruce, but you can technically pick any color you want, uh, this direction. And now you'll see that my spruce is actually level with the water. That's what we want. Underneath that, you're going to come in and add six slime blocks in this pattern. And then underneath that, you're going to do in order a note block, an observer facing the note block, and a sticky piston facing away. Then you're going to do three honey blocks, and in reverse, a note block, an observer, and a sticky piston facing away. That's your main flying machine. I'm going to go ahead and be safe and put a obsidian block here and an obsidian block just a couple blocks away over here. That way my flying machine doesn't actually fly off because I want it to stay for just a minute. Now up here we need to finish building the boat, but before we actually put the boat into the water, I'm going to put a temporary block over here as well as a spruce trapdoor and a upside down facing staircase because we're going to need to piston these over into where the boat is. Now for the tricky part. We want to place the boat inside this fake boat. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a couple of blocks like that. And we got to be very careful here because we're going to need to line up our boat exactly. If your boat is off at some strange angle, eventually it'll fall out of the flying machine. So you want to make it as straight as possible. To do that, I'm actually going to crouch and use the top of my toolbar. And you can see the black line of this block in front of me just barely visible down there. I want to line up that black bar with the top of my toolbar and try to make it be as exact as possible. But in addition to that, I also want to be on the center line right between those two pixels. So as close as I can get to being exactly straight between the two pixels of the block in front of me and at a perfect horizontal to the block. That seems pretty good. Now from here, I can go ahead and clear out these blocks. The boat will fall down. We're in business. 
At this point, I'm going to build out a couple of blocks and put my piston right here, facing into those blocks. And I'm going to power my piston, put a temporary block in front of it, and power it again. And that should give me my boat. At this point, before you go and test it, make sure you clear any additional blocks like that one. And then you can hit this note block and it should fly. And then you can hit this note block and it'll go back. And you've got yourself a moving boat. Now for my boat, I put a villager in there, but just be careful when you do that to not knock the boat out of position. Otherwise it may end up being at a weird angle again and falling out of your flying machine. Now for automating the boat to go back and forth, it's actually pretty simple. All you need to do is have something hit this note block and it will go back and forth. So what I did is built up the side of the shore here slightly and down here set up a very long etho clock that just goes back and forth. That connects up to a little bit of redstone wiring that goes to an observer and that's what powers the note block. So if we do this, that should send our boat bailing back off to the other side. Excellent. On the other side of the lake, what I did was set up a little bit of a pile of rocks here with maybe a rotting stump or log that comes up and that's what is hiding all of my redstone in here that I have to be able to send it back and forth. So you can actually see a note block there and an observer that that's the one that connects to that uh, note block. The timings I've set up are gonna be uh, pretty long etho hopper clocks. However, sometimes they do end up syncing up just a little bit and that's okay. He's maybe just uh, caught a big fish and immediately comes back to drop it off. No big deal. And so that's basically it. I'm gonna go ahead and cover up my hopper clock. I'm going to give you two warnings, and that is that the hitbox of the boat is a little bit wide. And so you can actually see I have it set at a little bit of a corner to the post of the dock here. If you try to make it go past this corner of the dock, the hitbox of the boat is going to hit the block's hitbox, and the boat's going to stay stuck and is actually not going to go past it. So that's why I leave it kind of catty corner like this. It's still close enough for Balin to actually be able to interact with the barrel, which is pretty cool. Second thing is that when it comes to at least Java, you're going to want to find some block that your flying machine is not going to interact with when it's going back and forth. So I ended up using these terracotta blocks to be able to make it look like some maybe underwater lichen or moss or something is growing on the post of the dock. And that's what I have to kind of allow the slime blocks to slide back and forth depending on how it goes. You can actually see that I did the same thing over here. I set a bunch of terracotta so that way that the honey blocks are not going to grab it as it slides back and forth. If you're on bedrock, flying machines don't really work. But even if you do get one to work, you're probably going to end up having to use obsidian or something like that because there's just fewer blocks that slime and honey don't grab on bedrock. Well, that's going to be it for today's episode. I hope that you enjoy. I love having a little boat going back and forth into the lake. Balin is an excellent fisher. You can see he caught a big old salmon right here. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed the builds. And uh, hey, thanks for watching, builders. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great one.